Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. The majority of our customers that come in are actually addressing these current issues, saying I'm getting multiple calls a day, you know, from numbers that I don't recognize. It is predicted that half of all cell phone calls could be robocalls in 2019, and some of you might call that an epidemic. So some phone companies are adding features to help combat those pesky calls. Valley News Team's Maddie Gelseth explains. On the new Google Pixel 3, it comes with a built-in feature called call screening. It aims to identify who's calling you if you don't know the number that pops up. In that call before you answer it, it'll actually give you an option to hit screen call. You would select that option and at that time you'll see a screen um, with text marquee showing up and it'll actively show you what that recipient of that call is saying. This feature is offering people a safety net to receiving robocalls. The owner of Gadget Garage says this feature is past due. Google's uh, at least taken some action to stop it and that's good. Um, and hopefully everyone else will get on board and put an end to it. Nelson says it's a feature that other phones will catch on to. With Android operating systems, it's possible that, you know, other devices that are in those systems probably are going to jump on board, uh, whether it's Samsung or LG and things like that. But even without this call screening feature, there are still options to block robocalls on iPhones and Androids, like this blocked contact list. In Fargo, Maddie Jalseth, Valley News Live. <clears throat> This feature is part of the software update for the new Google Pixel 3s, but some phones might not get it since the call screening feature is released in batches. Authorities are still investigating the scene where a train derailed early this morning in Polk County. It happened just east of Fisher, Minnesota. Authorities say no one was hurt, but 14 cars full of coal went off the tracks. Crews are still working to clean up the site. It's unknown why the train jumped the tracks. Seems pretty nice out there. Not super warm, but not super cold either. Let's find out exactly what we can expect if we're heading to the Holiday Lights Parade this evening. Robert? Yeah, we had some warmer air make its way on into the region overnight and through the day today, but that is getting pushed on out of here with northerly winds returning to the area. Right now, teens to the north and some 20s and 30s to the south. 14 right now in Bedette and Cavalier. 26 here in Fargo. 36 in the Gwinner area. Winds again northerly, and they're going to stay northerly as we head through this evening. That is giving us some wind chills in the single digits, down to zero in Bedet 15 here in the Fargo Moorhead area. Quite a bit of cloud cover out there underneath those clouds, not a whole lot going on. So I can't rule out an isolated flurry, very light flurry in a few areas. Here in Fargo, if you are headed to the Holiday Lights Parade, we are going to see temperatures dipping down into the lower 20s by 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock. And down into the teens overnight tonight. Wind chills in the teens and single digits during the holiday lights parade. So bundle up as you head on out there. But uh, lots of folks around will be nice and warm with a big huddle of people mm -hmm. around the parade. Thanksgiving right around the corner. How's the travel weather looking? We'll let you know here in just a few minutes. It's a little nicer than it has been some nights we've been at that parade. Some couldn't, years. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. Authorities say a man involved in a deadly hotel stabbing in Fargo is now facing felony theft charges. Back in September, we told you about a man by the name of Jacob Dirks. Authorities say Dirks went to the American to find the person he believed stole $10,000 from him. That man was Sean Bear, and he is now facing a felony theft charge. Authorities say while at the hotel, Dirks was stabbed in the stomach by Sean Bear's brother, Alan Bear. Alan Bear was charged with murder, but the charges were later dropped. Authorities say Allen was acting in self-defense. Authorities have released all of the names of the three victims who died in the Air Med plane crash near Mandan, North Dakota. The pilot was 48-year-old Todd Lasky of Bismarck, and 63-year-old Bonnie Cook was a NICU nurse, and 47-year-old Chris Iverson was a paramedic from Mandan. Again, all three died in the crash Sunday night. This twin-engine Bismarck Air Medical went down in a field. Officials say an Air Force rescue team analyzed the area, indicating that the large debris field shows the plane might have broken up at about 14,000 feet in the air. One investigator said he's never seen a plane crash with this kind of debris field before. It's unknown what caused the crash. Police are trying to figure out why a man gunned down his ex-fiance outside a Chicago hospital and then murdered two others, including a police officer. Hillary Lane has the latest from New York. Bunting was put up at a Chicago police station in tribute to slain police officer Samuel Jimenez. 
The 28-year-old father of three was killed Monday trying to stop a hospital shooting rampage. Witnesses say the suspect, Juan Lopez, argued with his ex fiance Dr. Tamara O'Neill, in the parking lot before shooting her multiple times. Lopez then ran inside, where police say he killed resident pharmacist Dana Less and Officer Jimenez. If it wasn't for them, you may be doing 20 press conferences, not one or two or three. The father of Dana Less thanked Chicago police for saving lives. He also stressed that he didn't want his daughter to be remembered as a victim. She had a life. She lived her life every day. She never stopped. She ran marathons. And I think we can all learn from her. Make the most of your life. Dr. O'Neill helped run the emergency room at Mercy Hospital. Her co-workers called her a fantastic person who will be dearly missed. If I was an extremist and about to die, I would love for Dr. O'Neill to have been here to take care of me. The suspect was killed in the shootout. It's unclear if he shot himself or if police killed him. Hillary Lane, CBS News. The Chicago Fire Department says Lopez had been kicked out of the city's Fire Department Academy four years ago after threatening a female cadet. West Fargo residents are getting some good news and hopefully easier holiday travel as the city announced that contractors for the 13th Avenue road construction project are set to be done working and have all lanes open to traffic by the end of the day tomorrow. The city says over the next few weeks there will be random lane closures during the day on 13th Avenue while crews install permanent streetlights. They also say speeds will remain reduced until everything is completed but will soon return to 35 miles an hour. Next year, crews will have minor project work on 13th Avenue that will cause some temporary lane closures for a few weeks in the spring. The young people in our community are stepping up and you have stepped up and needy people around here are benefiting. The student-led Fill the Dome food drive is headed for another big year and organizers and volunteers are wasting no time getting the goodies they've collected off the dome floor and loaded into trucks and on the way to the Great Plains Food Bank. The annual Thanksgiving event is an ongoing success involving area students from more than 50 schools. Since its inception 11 years ago, the Fill the Dome project has collected 2.3 million pounds of food and raised over half a million dollars. The food you see here today behind you, but also all the funds that have been raised, which are also equally important, will provide somewhere in the neighborhood of 300,000 meals for families without enough food on the table. Salen says there are about 26,000 people in the Fargo-Moorhead area alone who come to the food bank and its partner agencies looking for help because they don't have enough to eat. Over 193,000 pounds of food were donated this year to help those in need. RDO's 19th annual Caters Taters for Charity Lunch kicked off today with hundreds of people flocking through the doors for baked potatoes, cookies and lemonade, all while helping a local charity. All of this year's proceeds will go directly to the Great Plains Food Bank. The Food Bank says they can provide three meals for people in the valley for every dollar raised today. It reminds me that each of us can do something to end hunger in our community, that we can buy a potato, we can volunteer an hour, we can write a check out. We all can play a role in it. And this is just a perfect example of how people can come and enjoy a meal together and still help those who are hungry among us. People from the Great Plains Food Bank tell us their large turnout today was more than they could ever have asked for. Downtown Fargo is going big for the holidays tonight with a kickoff of the annual Holiday Lights Parade. Everyone is invited. It starts at 6.30 and begins at 8th Street and Center Avenue in Moorhead, crosses the Red River onto NP Avenue in Fargo, and then turns north on Broadway to 6th Avenue. Bundle up and be sure to look for our Valley News Live team out in the parade. Peas might be on your dinner table this Thanksgiving, but they won't be served in the form of turkey. That's the name of this lucky bird that was pardoned at the White House today. Americans picked peas in a poultry poll that pitted him against a foul foe named carrots. Both birds share the same birthday, but have different turkey traits. According to the White House, carrots weighs more and has a strong and confident gobble, while peas prefers to be the boisterous bird. Even though he was officially pardoned by the president, his feathered friend, Carrots, will also be spared.
I will be issuing both peas and carrots a presidential pardon. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee that your pardons won't be enjoined by the Ninth Circuit. Always happens. Peas and carrots will be spending Thanksgiving together at an exhibit in Virginia while the first family heads to Florida. While they're away, the White House will play Santa as an army of volunteers transforms the mansion into a winter wonderland for Christmas. If you have romaine lettuce in your refrigerator, you need to throw it out. The CDC is warning consumers to not eat romaine lettuce as it investigates an E. coli outbreak. This applies to all types of romaine lettuce, including hearts of romaine and prepackaged salad mixes. The CDC says consumers should throw it all away and clean the shelf or drawer where where the lettuce was stored. 32 people in 11 states have become sick, including 13 people who had to be hospitalized. No deaths have been reported.